In this video, we're going over independent data research of over 25 million plus employees to find emerging job report trends for the small business economy, as well as new findings when it comes to how consumers are being persuaded to try a new product or service, whether it's influencer marketing or word of mouth. So if you're a small business owner, you'll want to stay tuned uh, because you want to find out what we find in these job reports. It's not done by the Fed, it's done by an independent study. As well as how are you going to get new customers? How are you going to market to them? Are you going to do it by word of mouth and old school as like referrals through family and friends or your, you know, your current clients? Are you going to leverage influencers and people in your local economy? Are you going to use those influencers to uh, reach new customers? So you'll want to stay tuned on what we go over here. So again, this is Jackson Nell and you are watching No Fighting Today is on Monday, November 4th. It is the day before election day. And I know you guys have heard way too much about Kamala versus Trump predictions, who you should vote for. You all probably already made up your mind, know you're going to vote for it tomorrow. So let's just focus on your business today uh, because that is what is most important. So before we get to our stories, though, for today, let's hit on the main points we went over last week. Uh, one in five small and medium sized businesses could be out of cash by Christmas, according to a report. I would love to hear in the comment section how you all feel. Are you worried about being out of cash by Christmas? What happens if it's a bad Christmas season? If it's not like a, a typical Christmas holiday shopping season, are you all going to be um, in dire straits when it comes to the new year? Or do you have cash reserves? We'd love to hear from you guys because we have seen reports from Intuit QuickBooks that $85 billion, in, according to QuickBooks, they believe that this Christmas season versus last is going to be $85 billion less. While uh, most small business owners still feel really confident about Christmas season. So something has to give there. Um, so again, we'd love to hear from you all how you feel about it going into the holiday uh, shopping season, which, you know, after Halloween, it's already started. So it's already, I'm sure over the weekend, you had plenty of customers already shopping for Christmas. Um, Shopify is now offering up to $2 million for their lending products. If you uh, use Shopify for your online retail as a business owner, then you can borrow up to $2 million through Shopify directly. So that's very exciting. If you are a Shopify owner, it makes everything easy for you guys. I'm not sure about the details as far as the interest and the terms, but it's something to look into if you do use Shopify. SBA has come under scrutiny for the lack of oversight and direct uh, achievements attributed to their $100 million plus community navigator pilot program. Again, this was an SBA program. They uh, received over $100 million to um, it's basically to fund small businesses that have a lack of resources when it comes to the SBA or give counseling to small businesses. Um, they already do this through their loan programs, but this was a, like a hyper local, um, I would say it's like a hyper -lo local initiative for uh, businesses in poor areas, low income areas, as well as where there's no SBA offices to help prospective small business owners or, or people that want to start their own small business. They can go to the SBA for help. And, and get that business started. So with that $100 million plus, they only attributed, uh, it was less than 500 companies were started, but they said that there was, you know, hundreds of thousands of hours spent on counseling small business owners. Uh, we did see some news from, from the uh, Native American uh, newspaper, it was Tribal News, and said that they saw a big success with it, that they funded over $10 million. And for the amount of money that they received, it, it seemed like a pretty good uh, achievement for them. So, but you know, overall though, we, we didn't see a lot of numbers come back on, you know, how many loans were we able to give out, you know, how many businesses, and again, only 500 businesses were started. So Republicans and the senators and Congress people are saying that there was no oversight from the SBA. Um, they just gave out the money and said, you know, do good with it make sure that you give out loans to certain businesses, but they weren't really actually on top of these lenders and CDFIs that received the money. That's what the Republicans are saying. Democrats are saying that this was a huge success and, you know, a lot of businesses were started and there were so many counseling hours and there was a lot of help done to these small businesses that typically don't receive it. So we'll keep tabs on this story as we go, um, but uh, interesting, you know, obviously an interesting article, you know, taxpayers, if this was a huge uh, let down, you know, it's a hundred million dollars down the drain, essentially. So a lot of, uh, a lot to unpack here. Anova, the owner of OnDeck and Headway Capital, two large merchant cash advance, I'm sorry, OnDeck is a huge merchant cash advance lender. And then OnDeck and Headway Capital both offer line of credit, both online lenders. So 
they surpassed one billion dollars for the first time ever in small business loan originations in a single quarter for the first time so that was during q3 so that's huge news coming from on deck and headway capital also big news we like to hear that these online lenders are, are lending money again at a big rate because you know in 2023 it seemed there was a huge drop uh it, it just seemed like not as many of these online lenders were lending money so it's good to see that they are hitting record numbers this year <clears throat> emx and the chamber of commerce foundation teamed up to greet uh small businesses that were affected by hurricane helene and hurricane Milton. five million dollars a uh, total of five million for for one thousand businesses so that's five thousand dollars each for each business that qualifies so that is great news coming from them because we have still Yet to hear any news uh, as far as the SBA actually lending out money for, you know, EIDLs, the economic injury disaster loan for those businesses that were affected by those hurricanes. They have started re receiving applications, but have not heard of money being, you know, lent out yet to those businesses. Okay. So those were the major points that I wanted to hit on. Again, some big news from the SBA, you know, lack of oversight, um, but the online lenders are, are lending money again in a big way. Uh, there's, there's some help coming in for those businesses that were affected by, you know, the hurricanes. Uh, but again, it seems like the SBA is just, you know, I don't know if it's the matter of the SBA or if it's Congress not allotting enough money. There were a lot of uh, national disasters this year, but it's, it's a shame that it's a real shame that the federal government cannot provide enough money right away for these small businesses that have gone through so much, you know, their businesses could be destroyed if they weren't already destroyed by the hurricane they could be from the lack of uh, help from the federal government which they're supposed to step in in these times and right now they don't they don't have the the funds to be able to lend lend money out to keep these businesses alive okay so moving on so the story today big one um, so that independent report that we talked about the 25 million u.s employees that we're looking into that is coming from adp they are a, a nationwide payroll provider so Based on the companies that they provide payroll to, they have a total of 25 million employees that um, they team up with. I believe it's Stanford every month to do these research studies. And they actually have a, they call it a chief economist. I was reading the article there by small business. Uh, yeah, small business trends. They team up with Stanford every month to, to give out these reports. And it's uh, interesting because it's different than the federal reports that come out, the jobs report from the federal government. Good to see that the private sector these big companies that handle these private companies, we have different numbers to look at. And they said that the private sector added 233,000 jobs in October. Annual pay, uh, year over year, annual pay is up 4.6%. And it breaks it down by, um, we're going to break it down by industry sectors. I'm not going to go over each one, just the ones that stand out the most. So the goods producing sectors, total of uh, plus 22,000 jobs in October. Construction was the largest there of plus 37,000, but manufacturing is down 19,000. So I'm not sure why that is, but uh, th that's a significant number, 19,000. You know, I don't know if these jobs are going overseas, going to Mexico um, or, or over somewhere in Asia, but uh, that is a huge drop, 19,000 for small businesses. Service providers uh, was up 211,000 and the biggest um, bidding factors of that were trade, transportation, and utilities. I don't know why they put all those together. I wish they would separate those out, uh, but that was plus 51,000. And then education and health services. Again, I don't know why those two were put together, but plus 53,000, you would imagine that most of that has to do with health services. But still, that is good to see that um, small business or private sector health services adding 53,000 jobs. Uh, that's good to see. And then they break down by reasonable employment. So the, the, every single one of these grew, they bring it down by Northeast, Midwest, South, and West. South was the uh, number one in uh, regional employment change. And that was plus 77,000 jobs, whereas the West was the least amount in plus 44,000. Employment by establishment size, small, small establishments plus 4,000. So in small establishments, they're looking at employees from one to 49 employees. So one in 19 employees, it was plus 10,000. And this is where it's interesting. 20 to 49 employees was minus 6,000. Um, so very interesting that more, you know, mom and pop shops, more Main Street type businesses, we saw plus 10,000 jobs added, whereas 20 to 49 employees, that's where they're doing 
you know, at least a million dollars a month in revenue. And uh, we saw um, 6,000 jobs lost and that in those types of businesses. So that's very interesting to look at. They did not provide any reason or explanation as to why that happened, but very interesting to see that. Uh, medium sized businesses, so that's anywhere from 50 employees to 499. It broken out from 50 to 249 was plus 58,000. And then even bigger businesses, again, this is interesting, 250 to 499 plus 28,000. So those, you know, even in the me medium sized businesses when it comes to ADP, um, you know, 50 to 249 saw a lot more job growth than 250 to 499. You would think the bigger businesses are adding more jobs. Okay. And then moving on to large, they do this by 500 plus employees. They saw plus 140,000 job growth in October, uh, which makes sense. Again, if you have larger businesses, they should be adding more jobs than these smaller ones. Uh, but look, and again, I, I mean, I think it's great that that one to 19 employees, a lot of the small business owners, a lot of people that are going to follow this channel and that are right now, they're probably in that mom and pop range of one to 19 employees. Um, so it's good to see that there was plus 10,000 job growth because that is very significant for that, you know, amount of employees, those type of businesses. Okay. And then they also pointed out that job stayers year over year saw a 4.6% increase in pay while job changers saw a 6.2% increase. So if you change your job, you're likely to see a, uh, you know, pay increase. Whereas if you stayed, you did it. I mean, I, I would say that's typically the, the case, you know, unless you get fired and you take another job. Um, but, you know, anytime you're changing your job, it's probably because there's an increase in pay. Okay, so moving on to the, the second story here, Gen Z prefers influencer recommendations over word of mouth. So again, I was going back to, if you're a small business owner, how are you going to market? How are you going to get new customers? Are you going to focus on word of mouth or influencer recommendations? And this is research done by GoDaddy. My argument though is influencer recommendations. Well, it's not truly, it's not like word of mouth in a natural sort of way from your friends or family saying like, oh, I just had this, the best ice cream ever over here. Oh, it's a new place. You got to go try it or the best dinner ever, whatever. You know what I mean? You know, when it comes to influencer recommendations, you're, you're following these people every single day. You're kind of tuned in with them where they're like, they're almost a part of your life. If you're spending that much time on your phone, you know, you don't really know them, but you know them pretty well. And to me, it is, it is word of mouth though. It's the, it's not the same as coming from like a trusted friend or friend or family, but you do trust them because you, if you follow them on social media, it's, it's likely that you already trust them unless if it's just for entertainment value, but you are going to put a lot of, excuse me, you are going to put a lot of stock into what they say. Um, so to me, I, it, it really is a word of mouth thing. Because if you're just looking at like, it's not like an advertisement, while it might be, they might be getting paid as an affiliate marketer, where if they push this product or service and someone clicks on a link and, and pays for that and they get a cut of the money, it is an advertisement, but it's more of like a native advertisement. Um, it's not strictly, it's typically not strictly advertising, right? They do it in a way that it's like, oh, I'm using this product. And, you know, if you want to get these benefits too, you can click on this link. I have it, you know. You can click on this and order it from here. So it's not like a true TV advertisement or an ad that pops up on, you know, if you're looking at YouTube or you know, you're just scrolling through Instagram or Facebook, it's a lot different. It's more of the word of mouth recommendation. So I just thought that was interesting that they're not really saying that both are word of mouth and get the difference. But to me, it's, it's pretty much the same, right? And more people are, they're on their phones all the time anyway. And here's the other thing too, is they might see something from an influencer and then, then they might tell their buddy like, oh, I just saw them talk about this. So it, it kind of goes heat in heat with influencer recommendations and word of mouth in my, so anyway, that's it for today. Again, if you are a small business owner, it's good that we saw there was job growth in October. So let's keep that momentum going for November. And as far as getting new customers, you can obviously, it's a great idea to to leverage social media for their influencer recommendation and word of mouth is always, it's been the best form of marketing for years and it doesn't cost you anything. So it's always good to incorporate both of those uh, into your mix of marketing. And then obviously we went over all the updates from last week as well, uh, but I hope you all have a great week. 
explanation. We'll see you tomorrow.